right, we're gonna now we're gonna start talking about something I think is is pretty cool. We're gonna be actually looking at something that we see every day. We're gonna be looking at generators and dynamos. We're gonna be talking about alternating current. Uh, we're gonna be talking about direct current, and we're gonna be talking about motors. But that's in a future one. So we're talking about everyday things that we deal with on as life goes on. Now. Just before we get going on this, okay, let's just recap. This is electrodynamics. Electro, electrons or electricity, dynamics, movement. So we're going to be moving things. Guess what? We're going to be moving coils of wire amongst magnets. Right, but just let's have a look at something. First of all, remember what we had. We had a, get back to that. We had a wire and we had a whole bunch of electrons moving down that wire. As they moved down the wire, they created an electric field. So if it moved that way, we had an electric field going around the conductor, right? Now, we also, if you remember, we had a situation where we had um, Faraday's law and we had Lenz's law, right? Just to recap, we had Faraday's law. The EMF induced in a conductor is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. I'm going to come back to this in a sec. Lenz's law, the induced current flows so as to stop the effect producing it. So Faraday's law said, if you remember, if we had a magnet here and we pushed it into a coil, we created a current, right? Do you remember? We created a current. And Lenz's law said that if this was the north of the magnet there, this, and that would create a north here to try and stop it. All right? Just a bit of recapping. So what is happening is this is coming in as our magnet. And essentially, it's being stopped initially because it creates, Lenz's law creates a north pole opposite it. Therefore, but the flux lines start cutting through the coil. And if you remember, we had these. Previously, I didn't have a north and a south on it. Okay. Do you remember we went through this thing where we had a coil in the middle of two magnets? I think my north and my up. We had a coil in the middle of the magnets. And then what did I do? I pulled the coil out and put it back. So remember we spoke about instead of running around shoving magnets into coils, keep the magnets still and move the coil. That's, the, that's in essence what we're doing. We could have had a coil standing still and magnets going in and out of the coil, all right? Or we could have just keep the magnets still and move the coil. Some of you may have seen um, those, uh, uh, I think the, probably the, 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 the um, things you shake, all right, to create a current or charge a battery. Those more than likely work on a magnet going through a coil to create a current. Now, it's better for us if we keep the coil in there and we keep these magnets still. Because the magnets are generally, they're big and they're quite heavy. Put my timer on. They're big and they're quite heavy. But the coil is relatively light. So what we're going to do is we're going to be moving a coil around a magnetic field. right? Now, just let's recap over here. We had a formula, if you remember. Um, and that formula in essence was the EMF is equal to minus N delta phi D phi over DT or minus N change in phi over change, whoops, sorry, over delta T, which is the same as minus N times change in B A cos theta over change in time. Now, N over here was number of turns. In other words, we count the number of coils, all right? That was then giving us, so the more coils, the more flux lines could cut through. Therefore, the bigger the EMF, the bigger the EMF, the bigger the current. So therefore, if we had 100 coils and 1,000, we'd get much more voltage and current out of 1,000 coils because the EMF is directly proportional to the number of turns. Ignore the minus sign for the moment, all right? B was my magnetic field, wasn't it? 
okay? My magnetic field, okay? And A is my area of the coil. And cos theta, let's hold that for a second, delta T was time. Now, if you remember, we said over here, all right, there's no flux lines cutting. So if my coil was here, all right, or over there, it's not cutting into the field. Now I take it in and then out and in and out. As I am moving this, it's the same as pushing the magnet in and out. I am cutting through the field lines that are moving from north to south. As I cut through the field lines, so I'm creating the EMF and the current, right? The more coils, the bigger the EMF. The faster I do this, the bigger the EMF and the bigger the current, right? The stronger these magnets, the bigger B, okay? The bigger the magnetic field. And, okay, the area of the coil also is going to play a role. Area very often is limited by the size of the machinery we're going to be using for it, right? Now, let's just say, okay, now we've got a situation where we've got this magnetic field between the north and the south and a coil. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just slip this down quickly. I'm just going to look quickly. Oh, Faraday's law, Lenz's law, please make sure you know it. As you know, you have to bring them out absolutely word for word, perfect to get full marks for it. It's part of the theory, so understand it, know how to do it. All right. Now, some of you have heard the word dynamo. A dynamo. What is a dynamo? A dynamo is, if you have ever seen the older version of a bicycle, it's got like a little tubular thing on the back that you unclip and put onto the back wheel. It's got a little thing that gets turned by the back wheel, right? So as the wheel is turning, it turns this other tiny little thing and it spins a coil inside magnetic field, generating electricity, all right? So the dynamo, all right, it's something that generates electricity, right? It generates electricity for us, okay? Also, we've got the term generator. All right? All right. Uh, sorry, it was busy auto storing when it does that. So we've also got the term generator. Okay. Now, what does a generator do? All right. The generator is the same as a dynamo. It's going to be different when we discover, when we talk about alternating and direct current. But just before we get there, let us now look at in the textbook, you have got a drawing or you will see drawings where you've got a magnet, a north and a south pole magnet, and you've got something that looks like this, right? Which we basically have got a copper wire. I've obviously exaggerated it just to be able to put it onto screen, but it goes around and this thing is going to spin inside there. So instead of doing this in and out of the field, we're going to keep the coil. There's one coil here. We're going to keep it in the field. Now, I'm just going to move this. Bear with me a second, just so that you've got a better angle of it. Now, you can see the north and the south, right? So the first thing is to say, okay, north to south, there's a magnetic field. Therefore, I always put in my magnetic field if I'm given it. So let's just say I've got a north pole here and a south pole here, all right? I'm going to show you in 3D, but I'm going to try and draw it in 3D as best I can. We are then going to put something that looks like that paddle of mine inside there, and we are going to turn it. Let's look at what I've drawn now. North, south, you've got those. I have got this single loop of wire and I am now going to start turning this, right? As I turn this, I am going to start generating a current flowing in it, right? Now, as the current starts to flow, right, I'm going to get electrons moving from this side all the way around or backwards and forwards because the current is a flow of electrons, right? So, 
let us just say that this is A, the top is the A and the B, C and D, okay? Let's call this end A and let's call this end over here, end D, okay? Now, as I spin it, right, like this, or I can spin it like this as well, all right? Doesn't matter as long as it is spinning inside the magnetic field, right? So this thing I've got turning that way or it could be turning, it doesn't matter, okay? Just let's go back and examine something quickly. Remember the field over here, right? Right? Remember at this point, I have got the all of the field lines going through there. Cos theta is equal to zero. Because remember, theta is the angle between the normal to the surface, in other words, the 90 degree, and the flux lines. So here, cos theta is equal to 90. Well, let's look at what is cos of 90 degrees. Cos 90 equals zero, okay? And cos of zero is equal to one. So what we're saying is at this point, okay, my flux through there is a maximum. Over here, there's no arrows going through. Do you remember that from the, the videos of the, the, um, the magnetic fields that we did last time? Now, in the, in the case of the, of the generator or the dynamo, we are moving this, so we are applying an external force in moving it. We're sitting on the outside with a crank handle, or we're turning a wheel and the dynamo wheel is turning, okay? We are supplying a, an external force to turn this thing around in the field. That's very important because when we get to a motor, it's different. So now we say, all right, this thing is going to spin and it's going to move up and that's going to move down. So AB, which is this side, is moving up, and CD is going down. So now we are cutting the magnetic field. Remember, we only generate when we are cutting. So once this thing is moving in and out, it's cutting, right? If it stops, it's not doing anything, okay? It's just standing there. It has to cut it. So we've got to turn it. If I just put it here, it's not going to do anything obviously, because there's no, there's no free lunch, is there? That's the rule of the world. Now, how do we know which way the current flows? Okay, now we bring in a guy called Fleming, and Fleming had something called, I will put his name down here, Fleming, and he had the right hand dynamo rule. Right hand dynamo rule. Well, what does that mean? It's this. Okay. This is the right hand and the dynamo rule is this. For those of you who were, uh, what you might call it, as early years played soldiers running, and you made the gun shape, right? Boom, boom, boom. Now, this is, we've got three fingers. Thumb, forefinger, and second finger. You have to do this. Okay. So get used to it, and this is not going to work, guys. Seriously, it's not going to work. You're not going to get the right answer if you do this. You actually have to hold the fingers like that, okay? Or do your darndest. If it's a bit skewed, that's fine. But can you see what I've done? Four finger, each one is orthogonal, which means 90 degrees. So we've got the thumb, T-H-U-M-B. M is motion which is direction. Okay, I'll explain now. Thumb is motion, is direction. Okay, four finger, F is field. Always north to south, right? Always north to south. The four finger and the second finger is current. Okay, so four finger field. Okay, now, so what do I do? I say, all right, the field is the, this finger is the field. So I point it from north to south. You can see there, I'm sure. I'm pointing it from north to south, right? North 
to south. I'm pointing it like that, right? Now, this thing is turning, spinning. What you have to do is, first of all, you will always see a loop, generally speaking, okay? Label it A, B, C, D, right? A, B, C, D. The books do it this way as well. That's why I'm using the terminology, all right? So, what we do is you ignore one of the limbs, one of the legs of the loop. Only focus on one loop, one, one leg. So, I'm going to focus on A, B, all right? So, A, B is moving up. So, my thumb is showing motion up. So, this, the, the second finger here is showing me my current is going from A to B. So, I then go and I say righty-ho then. All right. I can say, let me just put it onto red, this one is moving up. Therefore, the current is moving from A to B. Okay. Let's just go through what happens with CD. Field. Motion is, this CD is going down. So I say down, which means the current is coming this way, which is obvious. But just for completeness sake, from C to D. Right? Let's go through that again. Can you see I am moving this up like that? All right. So therefore I go, field, movement is up. I'm ignoring the other wire. I'm only looking at one. It's going up. So the current is going that away there right similarly if you had it this way you would also do the same thing all right we'll do some of those again just now now what we've got there is we've now applied the right hand dynamo rule okay so in any situation we find the field we look at which way the uh, um, the the, cur the motion is and we deduce which way the current is going okay so let's take it this way now. Now here's AB, and let's say I'm turning AB this way, right? So that means field first, motion that way, so the current is now coming up, right? You see that? Field, all right, just get my thing, field, motion that way, fingers pointing up. And yes, it does get physically challenging. Okay, try not to put a shoulder out. But... It's the only way to see which way these things are going. There is no other way. Okay? Um, so, you have to go and say, right, A, B, C, D. Those are the two signs. Only focus on A, B, or C, D. Field. Which way is it going? Is it going up or is it going down? If it's going down, the current's coming that way. Okay? Similarly, you could have one way they give you this. Alright? Like so. And it's moving that way. Right? You would then point north down and you'd have the current, very difficult to hold it, but let's go. Uh, field, north to south. Movement this way, so the current is coming out this side. All right? You have to play with it just a couple of times and it's simple. Now, here's a hint. Please, you can turn the book around. I know, that sounds stupid, doesn't it? But if the little diagram is like that, turn it. So that you don't have to do a contortionist exercise, okay? Because standing on your head and, and dislocating a shoulder when you're answering a test or, or a homework question is probably not a good idea. The reality, turn the page around so that it's comfortable for your hand. But guys, you have to do this. There is no way out, okay? And the quicker you say, right, I'm going to do this, the easier these problems become. Now, let's examine as we are turning this, okay? Let's just go and have a look at something here. We said, all right, let's just get another one going. I just want to put my stuff out the side so we can talk. Now, I've got my next one. Oh, wait, I want to just get page two. And I want to go back to black. So what we said, as the wire moves up, right, remember, we had this. Okay, I'm just going to draw it now in single. We had the wire was moving up there okay so we had a b c d call this end a call this end d so what is happening we said the wire is moving up this is north that is south okay so therefore 
up, moving up, current is going from A to B. Right? The current is that way. Therefore, the current is that way. Check it. Yep, it's right. Therefore, if the current is moving that way, what is a current? It's a flow of electrons. So it means the electrons are moving from A to D. So at D, I have, I have got, and I go and think the opposite way, at D, I have got a pile of electrons, and at A, I've got a dearth of electrons. So at A, I'm positive, and B and D is negative. So can you see what I did? I put in the current, field, movement, found the current, completed the loop of the current. When I've completed the loop of the current, I then look what is happening at my ends. So I look at the end, the ends, A and D. Because we want to see what's happening there, right? Because when we turn this, what is our objective? Our objective is to generate electricity because we want to use it. We want to make a light bulb glow. Uh, we want to charge a, uh, a, a battery, blah, 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 right? That's what we want to, we want to run the house, uh, our lights in our house. If it's a generator, the ones that we've got outside or the ones that, that are used if, if a power outage goes, uh, ones that are used in rural, very remote areas, right? You generate power, you generate electricity. Now, therefore, we are turning it with an external force, a handle, or a, or a petrol engine could be turning it. A diesel engine could be turning it. You know, big places have got big diesel uh, um, d uh, engines that actually turn these generators. Now, let us go back to the ends. Remember, we said it's moving that way. So we plotted our current, right? Remember, it was moving up and down. So the current was going A to B to C to D. A, B, C, D. So end A and end D. End A is positive. All the electrons have gone. They flowed that way, right? And over here, all the electrons are sitting there, so that's negative. Now we want to grab those electrons off because we've made electricity now, haven't we? We've turned it. So when we grab the electrons off, we need to see what is happening, okay, at ends A and D. So now, okay, We'll, go to, we'll get to the graphs in a minute, okay? Let's have a look. Let's just take this wire. Bear with me a second. I'm going to take this wire end A and end D. And in your books, you're going to see what's called a slip ring. All right? Now, what it is, is there's two rings over there, right? Okay, that's not a great one. But you know what? I'm not an artist, so there we go. All right? There we go. So what happens? It's probably not hundreds. Okay, let me try and draw it as you will see it so that it makes more sense, right? I've got the one at the front. Whoops, not like that. I've got the one at the front. There's my ring at the front. And I've got another one behind it. All right, there. Now what happens is end A comes along and touches this guy. End D comes along and touches that guy. So that's end D. All right? These things are going to spin, all right? Over here, I've got like a little thingy that sits over there. It is called a brush, and it's called a brush. What happens is if you look at them, okay, they've got tiny little um, copper wires on the end that actually look like a brush, and they wipe off the electrons as they flow, all right? The brushes are then connected to the circuit. Okay. In other words, you've got some resistors, capacitors, whatever in that circuit, uh, a radio, you've got transistors. Uh, these days you've got chips in it and whatever. So you're going to push electrons through that circuit, right? So now when my, let's go back to this and just try and stay with, the, with it here. At this point here, all right, I'm going to start at this point. Can you see that the normal, in other words, over here, okay, I am not generating any current when it's here. I have stopped it. It's spinning, but pretend we've, we've stopped it. So I'm not generating any current. Essentially, this thing is in the middle. It's in the nowhere land. So I'm not cutting flux. All the flux is going through, right? 
all the magnetic lines are going through. I am not cutting. Now, as I go down, I start to cut, right? As I go down, I start to cut. So let me start over this side at the bottom, right? And as we go, we start cutting up. At this point here, I've reached a maximum cutting because my cos theta is at 90 degrees, okay? I've got my maximum at that point. I've cut the most flux lines there. I've cut everybody, okay? Now I'm going to cut to zero. Now I'm going to cut everybody to a maximum and then to zero. So can you see I've cut through one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, right? Just, just assigning numbers. So as it's turning, end A, if you remember, okay, what did we say? Let's go back and look. End A was positive, okay? So as we are turning this thing, all right, end A starts off as positive, and end D was negative, right? Now, as I turn, remember up here, this is A and B, and right up this way the current is flowing from a to b now it gets to zero so i've got a maximum there now nothing now i start cutting this way have a look a b is going down field down right my fingers pointing that way so now end a becomes negative end a becomes negative and this becomes positive Let's go through it again. Zero, I'm going down. This is A, B line, isn't it? There's my A. This is point A now. So this is going down, right? Movement down. The current is coming that way. So what we're saying is that these points A and B, they change polarity as it turns. So the electron goes zip, 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 zip all around this loop. Okay? He comes boom and back, boom and back. So it starts off positive here, and as it turns, it's positive, zero, negative, right? As it's turning, if you follow just one line, don't follow both, it goes up to zero, maximum, but now point A has become negative. So, essentially, depending upon where we start, and I'll get back to that in a moment, all right? If this is at zero, whoops, let me just put it... I know, back to black, there we go. That's at zero degrees. This is at 90 degrees. This is at 180 degrees. I'm going to explain now what I'm talking about. This is at 360 degrees, right? I want to say that at zero degrees, it's zero. It reaches a max at 90, all right? And then it comes down. So this is positive. Let's go and we say, right, zero, 90, 180. But now, this is terminal A. But it changes to become negative when I've gone halfway around. Right? Let's go through that. At zero degrees, okay? Remember, at zero degrees, I have cut nothing. I am therefore, zero degrees is here. Please remember, that's not zero degrees. That's 90. Just think, I've cut maximum flux here. All right, here is where I have got no EMF because I have basically not cutting anybody. Maximum flux, but no current, no voltage. Over here now, as I turn, I reverse my polarity of point A at the end. Okay, as it goes up, I'm starting here at zero and I've got, let's say this is I or EMF, it doesn't matter. We start off, we've got at zero degrees. It's the angle of this normal between this and the lines. You can see it's parallel. Okay? And it's zero. There's no angle between the two. Here we go at 90 degrees. You can see. Right? Then we go at 180. It's here. I'm back to zero. But now we start cutting the other way. The direction of the electrons change. Here it was positive. Right? Here it was positive, and there it is negative. So the ends change. The brush changes. As it goes around, the brush changes from positive 
minus 2, minus, and a plus. Right? There it is. As the thing spins, you go up to, let's call this I max, or, okay, obviously it's not going to be the same number when you have V max. So let me put a voltage graph in over here, for example. All right? Okay. There's no meaning of any of these numbers. Vmax, okay, and Vmax down here is, say, minus 12 volts and plus 12 volts, right? Current, I don't know, uh, minus 2 amps, plus 2 amps, plus 2 and minus 2 amps. Just doesn't matter. Okay, it's numbers. So what we've done here is we've generated a current that goes from 0 to max all the way down and then a negative, okay? This that we have done is called alternating current, right? It is alternating current. Why? Because it changes from plus to minus. So this is alternating current. Alternating current, and that's known as AC, okay? Now, there's a reason we say AC because we're going to see DC just now. Uh, I obviously stay away from the classic reference on the AC DC, right? But what you've got here is you've got, as this thing is moving, it's all about, it's actually about the ends. It's about how we're going to collect the currents, the electrons on the ends here. That's what we're talking about. This is A, this is D. Moving up, A positive, positive, zero, back down, and we're negative. So we are changing the direction. So the poor little electron is totally schizophrenic, goes this way, back, goes this way, back, okay? So the poor guy goes between zero, there, and there, and back, okay? So we've got an alternating current waveform, right? We call this a waveform, all right? Like that. The alternating current waveform. So on that situation, that's where we sit with him. Now we've made electricity. whoop de doo Okay. Oh, what we're going to do? I've got my thirty minutes, so I'm going to. On the next section, we're going to go through. Just to recap this, and we're going to go through a DC. Okay. Now the DC. Okay. Is going to be called something else. All right. We're going to basically decide which one is the dynamo and which one is the generator, and we're going to look at different ends. All right. But I'm sure you can understand that what we've got over here, I'm going to draw in on, just let me go and redraw that. If you give me just two minutes, okay? What I want to do is I want to put in that, my, like this, 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And I'm going to say, right, at this point over here, I was like that, okay? Zero degrees, remember? There he is, zero degrees, okay? I had zero at that point, I'm not cutting flux. I went to 90, there it is, okay? I have cut maximum flux. Then I went to 180, back to zero. Then I reverse it because I've turned, AD has now become the opposite way, negative, and minus, right? And you can see here, so at 90 degrees, I am flat. At 180, I have turned a full circle, and I'm there. And over here again, I am flat, right? And at 360, obviously, I have come back to my start. Okay, start was, all right, like that. So therefore, I've got A, B, C, D, okay? Now remember, A, B goes there, okay? So that's what I've got. That's straight up, by the way, obviously. It's the same as the start and the end of the same things. So what we've got there is we've got the alternating current because at the end of the day, when we go through this onto our slip rings, A and D, as they turn, the brush or the end changes from plus to minus. 
So our waveform looks like that. Okay. The next one we're going to go on to is we're going to talk about um, a split ring. Yes, it is a problem. Slip and split ring. Okay. And I don't have a mnemonic for it. But we'll talk about that next time. Okay. Cheers. I'll see you back and we'll carry on with the other form of a generator. Okay. Cheers. Bye.